Andrew, welcome to Canada. Thank you, Michael. Glad to be here. Uh, tell us about what's happening with the Australian listed property trust slash REIT market these days. Well, it's interesting, Michael. Uh, the Australian market has uh, never been better. It's actually a uh, very interesting situation. The investors and fund managers are driving investment uh, in Australia uh, in a global search for uh, income yield. What we're finding in the uh, Asian region in particular is that sophisticated re regimes have got a critical um, competitive advantage over the rest of the region uh, in being able to uh, source capital and investment because they are transparent, they are stable and they do also have the uh, opportunity to directly or indirectly access the Asian growth story. From that point of view in Australia itself uh, we're finding that the, the distributions uh, to the uh, REIT investors are larger than they've been for a very long period of time. They're actually up uh, by 20 to 25 percent in some cases. Uh, the REITs themselves are actually trading at a premium to NTA. And from a direct property perspective, what we're finding is that the property prices are extremely robust at the moment due to the heavy demand, and the heavy demand uh, driven by the fact that uh, people are searching for income yield uh, means that we are finding that uh, the uh, unit prices are also remaining very buoyant. Are there any um, regulatory threats or opportunities for enhancement in Australia in that listed property trust market? Yes, there are. Uh, the new government uh, has made it very clear both uh, here and overseas that Australia is open for business they're making a very big point of the fact that they want to be friendly to investment capital both domestically and overseas. The way this is translated is in terms of the pace of reform that they are looking to put uh, into the Australian market. Uh, most notably the uh, root liberalisation uh, initiative that the government has been undertaking. Uh, has uh, taken on a new form in the sense that it is picking up pace. In the next six months we are likely to see uh, legislation come through that's going to make it much easier for the REITs. It will expand out uh, a lot of the uh, investors that are eligible for the withholding tax. Uh, it will also mean that uh, the REITs will have a simplified and streamlined uh, set of rules that will make it easier for them to access things like uh, trust loss rules, capital gains, uh, taxation rules for uh, restructuring, uh, as well as uh, simplified distribution rules. That sounds terrific. Um, we're all familiar with uh, Westfield and other early listed property trusts venturing around the world for investments. Um, are those days back again for the Australian REITs? Are they staying close to home or they need to put money offshore? Well, that's a $65 million question. Uh, publicly at the moment, the REITs uh, have in the majority uh, opted to stay domestic. Nobody has come out publicly and said that they're going overseas. There are a handful uh, of sophisticated REIT investors who are looking overseas, but for the most part, they're sticking close to home. Uh, interestingly enough, the investors have already started venturing overseas uh, to buy up property and products uh, in other um, uh, regions. What we're going to see though is a very interesting, interesting 12 months because with the um, extremely tight market for product and the increasing demand, we're actually looking uh, from surveys of Asia that uh, a lot of the investors are looking to increase their allocations in those sophisticated REIT markets such as Australia uh, over the next two to three years. So what we are going to see is an incredible amount of competition for the product that's there. And so there's going to be a very, very simple equation. Uh, either people are going to be ha very, very competitive in uh, what they're uh, looking to acquire or they're going to have to decide whether or not they need to uh, take an overseas strategy. Alternatively, uh, overseas strategy is not necessarily going to be for every REIT. It'll be a different story from REIT to REIT. Uh, some will simply opt to move up the risk curve and take on investments that currently aren't being considered. Or ultimately, we might see more mergers and acquisitions coming through. Uh, basically, it is often quite effective and efficient to buy up a portfolio of uh, REIT assets rather than have to go out and individually 
uh, do battle to uh, get them on the market. So that's an interesting last point because you mentioned that most of the Aussie REITs are trading above net tangible assets. So you'd think that taking them private wouldn't be a profitable undertaking. Uh, but is there some M&A activity, notwithstanding the fact that they're trading above their net tangible asset value? Well, we've actually seen uh, just recently that there is some M&A activity um, and the, it hasn't been dampened by the fact that the NTA, uh, sorry, that there is a premium to NTA. I think what you'll find is it will be a much more difficult uh, proposition and it'll be thought through very carefully. But as far as a strategic play for the next five to ten years, there will be people who will simply opt in and say it is a worthwhile proposition. The other thing to remember is it's not necessarily going to be uh, all of the uh, star REIT players that are going to be uh, mergers or uh, merger and acquisition targets. It'll be players that are, that are smaller, who can actually be swallowed, or who are able to um, uh, be an accretive play for another REIT. Last question. We've had a uh, number of Canadian pension funds go down and buy up Australian infrastructure assets. Uh, Australia is still a good place to invest for Canadian money? Uh, Australia is going to be a very good place to invest for the foreseeable future. Uh, Australia has an incredible demand for infrastructure and it will be increasing over the next couple of years uh, as a result of this and the fact that the government itself is open to business uh, for, and uh, global capital. We know that uh, they will do everything in their power to make sure that it's an attractive destination for that capital. The simple reality is the government knows that they need to maintain a stable um, and transparent regime and one that allows people to make a uh, reasonable return. So they're actually already uh, showing to the market that they're going to do that. That's terrific. So Australia, great returns, great capital market rules and nice weather and nice people. That's right. Thank you so much for doing this. Thanks for your time.